Hello friend, so happy to see you again. Today I wanted to talk about the Dyson Airwrap. Yes, I have the Dyson Airwrap. I purchased it when it released, again, the new complete Airwrap styler. It was a very, very pricey number, but I was not willing to wait until it sold out again because I have wanted the Dyson, I wanted the Dyson, and I wanted the Dyson. I think it came out like three years ago, maybe four years ago. It's not a new Airwrap anymore. Like the Airwrap has been out for a while and I've never been able to get my hands on it because it's always sold out. And so I figured with this new release, I was just Going to jump on it because I have never heard anyone say that they bought the air app and then regretted it. I've heard people say that it was expensive. I've heard that maybe it's not worth the money, but I've never heard that it was a bad tool. So I wanted to test it out for myself, and this is the third week I guess I've been using it. This is the third wash day that I have since purchased. I found a way to get my Dyson curls to stay for a whole week, so I wanted to show you the process from beginning to end. It's my first hair video, so please be patient with me, but if you want to know how I get these really beautiful bouncy curls and um, how they last for a full week, looking good, carrying me from wash day to wash day, keep on watching. We're getting into it right now. All right, so I just pulled my hair out of the towel. I mean, and I had it resting in the towel for maybe five, ten minutes. My towel, by the way, is soaked, so it took out a good bunch of moisture. I would use a wide tooth comb or a wide tooth brush to brush through my hair, but I have, I guess, since lost mine. <laughs> I don't know where it is. The one really important step that I've learned so far is to use something really, really soft. This is the Brio Geo Be Gentle, Be Kind Detangler. This is aloe and oat milk ultra soothing detangling spray. I don't usually use a detangling spray. Usually I use a hair oil, but I find that with the Dyson, you want to keep your hair really nice and light. If you have fine hair, I think this is extra important because your hair may be weighed down more easily. I have really coarse hair and I have a lot of it. And this is like a very, very thinned out, very layered haircut. What I have figured out through using the Dyson is that less is more. You actually want your hair to be relatively airy, watery not super bogged down with anything so I'm just kind of like pressing it into my hair making sure that the particles have soaked in and I'm actually going to let this sit 10 or so minutes as I get my skincare routine together because I find that the drier your hair is the better in fact I would even reckon to say I oh gosh I would even venture to say that it's better for your hair to be dry and then re-dampened than really kind of like wet okay because my hair is I would call this damp I don't know is this wet I don't know, if you have a hair styler, if you are a hairdresser, please let us know down below what exactly means damp because this is not soaking wet, but it's definitely not almost dry. So I don't know what the threshold is. I'm gonna do some skincare while we're here and then we're gonna talk about the Dyson. Okay, so I've brushed my hair with a wide tooth brush. This is just one of those ones that you can air, air dry with. I'm just gonna demonstrate the blow drying and smoothing attachment just because I have it. I might as well show you guys how to use it. I don't know why I'm being so conservative. Typically, I would be a little bit more conservative with essentially how I heat style my hair because I don't like to blow dry and then curl. Like I, I think the whole point of the Dyson is that you're minimizing your heat styling. So obviously in an ideal world, I would simply wait for this to air dry 90% of the way through and then go in and curl my hair. But for today's purposes, I think it's fine. I also only use the Dyson around once every five days. So I won't say once a week. I mean, I don't know, who knows? It's still new to me. This is my third time using it. So maybe there's a sense of like honeymoon phase where every time I wash my hair, I want to use it. I, I do imagine in the future, maybe I would care a little bit less about my hair, but it just looks so good. And it stays looking so fresh over the course of the week that I, I want to do it. It only takes around 20 minutes for me to do my hair. And so it feels usually quite worth it for me to style my hair for a whole week of nice looking hair. Okay, so this is the status of the hair now. I've re-wet it with a little bit of detangling spray and I soaked up the towel. This towel is now soaking wet with the moisture. That's how much water is in my hair. And I'm sure if you have like big curly hair, it's even more. I'm gonna go get my blow dry spray and then we'll be right back. The heat styling mist I've decided to use is this one from Kristen S. Kristen S is a brand that you can find at Target. And I got really obsessed with watching this hairstylist. I don't remember her name, but she adores Kristen S and thinks that she can do no wrong, essentially. Like, she has reviewed the products and said that they're all really, really good, and especially for the price. And there was a phase in my life when I got the hair extensions that I needed all kinds of products. I needed texturizing spray, hairspray, hair oil, dry shampoo, um, you know, like powders and all that stuff, lotions and potions and everything. So I bought most of them from Kristen S, and I'm still working through them, like, over a year later. I'm looking around. I found it. I need to section my hair. So this is just um, the easiest way for me to do my hair. I'm trying to think about easiest sections. And I think easy would be 
just half and half. Now, depending on you, you may have more or less hair than I. I have quite a bit of hair. I mean, now that my hair has been thinned out, probably it's closer to average. So probably two sections will work for you. And I'm gonna use the regular smoothing attachment just to like give my hair a rough dry. This one comes with a knob at the top. So what you wanna do is pretty much just place it on your scalp. And then whichever way your, your scalp is facing, it's going to push this thing. So it's in the right direction now. And then... Okay, disclaimer, I don't actually know how you're supposed to use this. I don't know if you're supposed to smooth it by sliding it directly on your hair or not, but I kind of use it just like the blow dryer or like the original blow drying attachment, and that works well for me, so that's what I do here. It took literally one minute. It's 12.06 now, and it was 12.05 when I started. It took one minute for me to get my hair from this to this. Okay, so you can just see visually, I think this is closer to damp. The ends still have a little bit of moisture in them, but overall my hair is pretty dry. I would feel comfortable going outside like this. So yeah, one minute. So two minutes total to blow dry your whole head. It's not bad at all. We are a Dyson household. And when I say we, I mean I am a Dyson baby. I uh, not grew up with Dysons because they're not that old, but I have had a Dyson hair dryer in my mom's house like back when I was living with her for a while and even before I think it hit consumers maybe it was more common for hairstylists to get it and I remember getting styled with this in hair dryer and it's good but I'm shocked at how good this one is I've heard some people say oh well the um the smoothing attachment, the blow drying attachment, is not as strong as a Dyson hair dryer because they still want people to have the air wrap and the hair dryer I have to say this is for me as good as the hair dryer, if not better, because of the ergonomics of this. It's really nice and slim, and I think since the first iteration of the hair dryer, they have come out with new ones, but it is quite a bit heavier, if I remember correctly. I don't know how light the new ones are, but the original like pink and steel gray one, I feel like it was heavier than this, and the blow drying feels very comparable. I mean, maybe it's not comparable, maybe it is like half as good, but still, for me to blow dry my whole head in two minutes, that's good. <laughs> like, I, I feel like this is the thing that shocked me the most, in terms of smoothing the hair, maybe I'm not like using it correctly, like I'm not passing it over like a hair straightener. I really just use this for a rough dry and you're gonna notice that actually my left head, my left head, <laughs> my left part and my right part are not the same levels of dampness because I have to style this first. And after I style this, it's like five, 10 minutes and then I go back and do this one. And so this one has 10 minutes more to air dry and I would rather under dry than over dry. And that's just something that I do to minimize the kind of heat that my hair is going through. Granted, again, this um, hair dryer uses such light heat, like you can touch this and it's warm. It kind of feels like a hot mug um, or a teapot or something. Like I just blow dried my hair. It's definitely not getting extremely, extremely kind of um, boiling hot, which really shows me just how gentle the heat is on my actual hair. And I really appreciate that because when I was blow drying my hair with the Revlon One Step or my T3 Iron, um, it definitely I definitely was a lot less patient because I wanted to get my hair dried in five minutes. But the heat with which I had to use these tools actually did a lot more damage to get to that point because it pretty much just singed my hair to get to the point where it could blow dry in five minutes. I personally prefer to use the smaller barrel. I just find that it works um, really well for me and my needs. I like to have really, really bouncy hair on day one and then have it slowly fall throughout the week. And I will show you my tips and tricks on how I preserve the hair to make it like really um, bouncy the whole time. So this side of my hair is definitely still visually, like you can still see a little bit more moisture. Um, this side is pretty much dry but it's got a little bit of tack to it. So you're gonna split your hair down however you part it. I'm going to tie this part of my hair away because we don't need her right now. And we're just gonna focus on the left side of the hair. If you want, you can actually part this into two more sections and I think that would definitely make life easier for you. Yeah, this looks like that would make life easier. Everything I know about the Dyson Airwrap I've learned from Kelly Gooch. She is, of course, the icon of the Dyson Airwrap world and she has the most impeccable curls. But anyway, you're gonna have these arrows and I want the arrow to face outwards in the direction of the wall. And so I look in the mirror or look in the viewfinder or whatever and I just go that way. If you want your hair to be very like naturally curly, which <laughs> on Asian hair, it probably wouldn't be very natural. I mean, actually I take that back. Um, <laughs> I know some Asians with naturally curly hair, but for me, saying that my hair is pretty pin straight, um, I, I actually do want it to be quite a styled look, so I want all my hairs go, going outwards. So I pretty much just turn it on, and I'm not going to do it with sound right now because it's just really noisy. Uh, what I do is I turn it on, and then I kind of allow the air wrap to pick up as much hair as it pleases. And that is strictly because I have quite thick, heavy hair, and sometimes it's more or less wet depending on what it wants. And so I don't try to fight it by picking out sections. I really just hold it next to the sections, and I allow it to do it. I hold it vertically up and down so that way I can get really really close to the root and I can curl all the way up and I get a lot of volume right here because I really don't like having a straight 
piece of hair and then a wave at the bottom. I really prefer it to be wavy all throughout. So that way, as it falls, it falls into a nice kind of Hollywood wave. So whenever I do this, what I'm making sure is that the hair section that is on the barrel at any given time fully dries with the wind on hot heat. And then after it's fully dry, I kind of touch it, make sure that it's dry to the touch, and then I'll do the cool shot for a few seconds and then I let it fall. Right after I've curled all the hairs, what I do is I twist them and I let them cool in a combined twist. I actually twist them really, really tight. And this is something that I haven't seen yet, but I have found that this just helps my hair a lot. Um, the best thing to do would actually be to like twist it and then pin it, but I actually don't have any other hair clips. So we're just going to leave this here. <laughs> it, the best thing to do would be to pin this like down if you have a, a bobby pin or some kind of like way to adhere your hair to your scalp. So that way it can fully, fully cool while resting in an extremely twisted state. Otherwise, what I do is I kind of just hold it and I let it kind of sit and cool down while kind of splaying it in its little twisty thing just to kind of like promote airflow. I want it to cool down, but I want it to cool down in the twist. Does that make sense? Yeah, you can do this too. Just kind of let it sit. Let it sit in its curl. Now I've got that top layer, okay? This top layer is very wet, so I don't want to have them interfere with each other. So what I do is I throw the curls that I just did to the back, and then I will work on this back to front in the same way that I just did. Okay, tip in retrospect, because this was still just like my first or third time using it. Uh, I actually do recommend going in bigger sections, actually taking the time to section off the hair because then you get a little bit less of a mess and you can actually get through it a little bit quicker. That being said, this full process, like the full drying from beginning to end with the tool took only 20 minutes, so not bad. Okay, so we did the same thing for this top layer. And again, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to twist the hairs so that they all curl into one big mega curl. So we've got two mega curls on the left side of my hair, the top layer and the bottom layer. Twist them and seriously just let them set. Like literally just let them sit there in their tight little ringlet curls. Twist, 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 twist. And you're going to notice that all the ends want to face in the same direction, which is good. This is what gives you a really polished look at the end. I mean, I don't know. If you want something really relaxed, this is not the hair tutorial for you. But I've got two big mega Rococo curls, and I am just going to repeat the same thing on the other side. Um, I'm not going to film it just because this is really boring, but I'm going to twist it onto this way. So, right. And I want to give you a update on the time. It's been 15 minutes since the start of this. So it took around like three minutes to actually air dry everything. And I've been a little bit more careful on camera than I usually am. And even so, um, you can tell that I wasn't super perfect while I was doing it, but the curls came out pretty tight. So I'm going to do the same thing on the other side just to save a battery and time. I'm not going to show it, but yeah, you can expect the same thing. Rewind if you have to, but essentially I'm not super tidy. All I do is I split into two sections, top and bottom, and I just curl away from the face. And then once the curls are all done, I twist them together so that they kind of like can cool in one nice big lock. And um, I'm just going to do the same thing on the other side. Don't forget to twist it so it's facing outwards. Okay, so hopefully you can see that my hair is now fully curled. It's very, very bouncy. What I'm going to do is I'm going to twist each side. So left and right side. I'm going to twist it in the direction it's supposed to go. <laughs> and this requires a little bit of, like, having the hands coordinated to, like, twist. And while I'm doing this, I'm trying to detangle because sometimes the air wrap can get certain hairs stuck up in each other. So twisting, twisting, twisting. And then I bring them to the back and I just pin them there. And I just use a claw clip. You can use whatever. I just find like whatever can hold this hair to cool is enough. What I'm trying to do is just reinforce that curl pattern as much as physically possible without introducing more product, more heat. Again, I'm really trying hard not to use things like hairspray because hairspray can weigh the hair down. And um, with the air wrap, the hair is very, very delicate. And uh, it's just like, I think about it, you really just use hot air to like blow it. <laughs> so what you really need to do at this point is to set the hair. That's essentially what you're doing. It's like a hot roller, but even less intense in terms of like the, uh, the suggestion. So you really, really need the clips and everything to kind of reinforce all of it. 
by the end of it, you get really, really bouncy hair, and I personally adore how it falls over the course of the week. But this is just if you want like nice bouncy curls. If you don't want the bouncy curls, then don't do this because it's going to be very, very bouncy. I just really don't like a very loose, beachy look right out the gate because then it tends to fall. So that is it. I will be back after I finish doing the makeup portion of this video, and um, I will see you in a little bit. Okay, I am back. Are you excited to see me? I put on my makeup. If you want to see in the video where I haul all this makeup and I show you on my face how it goes, then I will put it up in the cards here. And um, let's take out this hair because it has been sitting for probably 30, 40 minutes now. Yes, you can see the curls are really nice and bouncy. They are tight. So I'm going to just kind of finger comb them out so they separate. I just don't want them all in like one particular clump. And so that's what the curls look like. They are absolutely stunning, really voluminous, really pretty. And if you want them to be nice and soft, you can just leave them like this. I find that without hairspray, they last probably four to five days. And my hair is really thick and really greasy. And it definitely gets weighed down at the top really quickly. Um, so <laughs> your mileage may vary. It may be more, it may be less, depending on how, you know, your hair is, your temperament. But, like, look at these curls. Like, they're very, they're solid. They're not um, flimsy whatsoever in the sense that, like, one gust of wind will knock them down and they're going to kind of fall. And as my days and weeks pass on, you're going to see that the hair um, essentially falls very, very gracefully. It, it becomes looser, like it starts to drop a little bit, but it doesn't ever become flat at the top and then like wavy on the bottom. It really sort of falls naturally. And so that has been the best way for me to get beautiful volume out of my hair. Sometimes what I do on like day two or three when my hair starts to get flat here is I just stick the curling wand right up in here to get a little bit of volume here. You know, or you can do that trick with the clip where you just take that little clip and you just go like this and that works as well too and it doesn't require any heat. You just kind of would clip this up and then you get some some uh, top volume. But overall, I feel like the Dyson Airwrap is fantastic. I'm going to do a whole separate video on um, whether I think I wasted money buying it or not because it was an expensive product and it's a series that I want to start on my channel called Did I Waste My Money? Because it is a, a big investment and... Um, there's no one that can answer that question better than you. All I can do is provide you uh, kind of the demonstrations and the, you know, the review and the input and all that stuff. But hopefully this was helpful. And if you don't have a Dyson, I still think the principles of setting your hair by twisting it into curls and then leaving the curls and pinning them to set will still be a really helpful tactic in terms of helping you to get the most longevity out of your curls if you want them to stay until wash day again which is what I do I only want to style my hair once and then I want it to look good and I want it to be like that until wash day again and wash day for me is in like four to five days sometimes a little bit longer depending on whether I'm going outside and working or not I try to preserve my hair as much as possible and just make sure it's not smelly and that's pretty much the only standard that I have I'm hoping to make quite a few videos with the Dyson it was too expensive for me not to feature it quite heavily I want to feel like it was worth it okay so let me know if you have any suggestions if you have the Dyson and you want some tips or you have anything let me know because I'm still new to this this is only my third time using it and um frankly I think for the third time using it this is pretty great results and I am really satisfied with it as a purchase so thank you so much I love you and I will see you guys on the next one bye I saw this hack on tiktok where you go like this <laughs> you go like this and you contour your double chin Oh my god, this is so uncomfortable. Oh! In terms of like contouring out my jawline and creating a distinct but separate line from my uh, neck, I actually think that worked remarkably well. <laughs> Why didn't I try this earlier? Why have I not been contouring my jawline? I should have been contouring my jawline a long time ago, ever since I've been gaining weight, but I feel like now that I know, I know, and now I know, you know. Well, that was actually a really remarkable hack.